move ahead. It's good. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone from the Transmart Foundation. I'd like to welcome you to our training class for August. Uh, this is a monthly um, class that is offered free uh, by the foundation and donated by uh, a few different members of the foundation. Uh, this month, the Hive uh, is donating this class. Um, and it will be taught by Peter and Ruslan from The Hive. And the topic is Data Science with the Transmart Platform API. Uh, the session will be recorded and posted on our website along with the PowerPoint uh, within a day or so, uh, as quickly as we can, uh, for you to review and share with your colleagues um, later. Um, our training classes are offered each month. Uh, we offer uh, a number of classes this year uh, it's always on the last Monday of the month, uh, and uh, it is offered at different, uh, at either at noon or at 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, to try to cover a few different time zones. The classes this year cover a number of topics, um, including uh, Transmart for Beginners, uh, which is offered several times, uh, as well as a number of other special topics on learning, uh, loading data, uh, advanced workflows, um, tutorial on ETL, uh, and today uh, we have a brand new class on data science using the Transmart uh, API uh, brought by the Hive. Uh, hopefully um, you'll enjoy this class. It's, uh, I'm quite looking forward to it myself to, to hear it. Um, as we get started, I'd like to uh, ask a couple of questions of the attendees um, just to help give the, uh, the, the trainers uh, an idea uh, of Kind of your background. So the first question should be up on your screen. It's, um, have you used the Transmart platform before? Uh, generally, these classes have been really focused on beginners, and so uh, it has been at least about 75% um, new. Um, be interested to see. Uh, yes, um, so 100% uh, have said uh, that uh, they have, in fact, used the platform before. I'm not surprised. Thank you. My second second uh, question is just to, to understand a little bit about your role. Uh, are you using the platform directly for research? Uh, are you supporting users in your company or your organization? Uh, are you doing academic research? Um, or are you a vendor using the platform? And uh, it's about uh, half of you are from vendors. Um, and the rest are split between directly doing research and supporting people in the organization. So that's uh, that's pretty consistent with what we've seen. So good. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, as I said, we'll um, uh, this is um, part of a program that we offer uh, every month, and um, we're uh, you know, very excited to have this this brand new class today offered by um, Peter and Ruslan from the Hive. So I will now turn it over to them. Uh, and uh, they will take it from there. Uh, if uh, you have questions uh, during this, um, you have a control panel uh, for the GoToWebinar. Uh, you can raise your hand. Uh, you can also post a question in a chat window, uh, in, in the question window, or you can ask a question in the chat window. I will be monitoring the questions and we'll try to get everything answered um, as we can, but there will be time at the end uh, also to answer these questions. So. Um, Hopefully, you enjoy the class, and um, uh, let me turn it over to um, to Ruslan. All right, you should have um, control. Yeah. There you go. Looks good. Hi right. guys. Welcome everybody uh, to our training: uh, Data Science is Transmart REST API in Python and R. My name is uh, Ruslan Forastiano, and here is uh, my colleague Piotr Zakrzewski. Yeah, we are software developers at the Hive, and uh, let us start. Okay, so first we will walk you through our RESTful API together with some background or how to authenticate against it. Then we'll follow through uh, with the clients currently available, uh, things in the wild uh, that you currently download from GitHub uh, and use against it, and then uh, we'll follow through with uh, some examples or how to use our R client and Python to do actual data science with, of course, some time for questions. 
Yeah. So on this slide, you see uh, a major Transmart REST API clients. Uh, for this training, we will use our interface and Python client. Uh, we prepared uh, examples for you. Uh, but the main, uh, the, the focus of our training uh, will be made for our interface, uh, which is our package uh, wrap, uh, that wraps uh, REST API and uh, it helps to authenticate and get data uh, from Transmart to our environment. Um, there is also a new API, uh, Transmart, uh, uh, sorry, new Transmart UI. Uh, we scored uh, this project called uh, Glowing Bear. That's the code name of this project, uh, which um, use exclusively uh, REST API. Um, another example of um, Transmart REST API client is a Spotfire plugin. Uh, Spotfire is a business intelligence tool uh, that uh, uh, yeah, uh, helps to do visualization and data analysis. Uh, there is also um, a Transmart mobile application for Android and uh, yeah, you could uh, find it on the Google App Store and install it uh, even now. Uh, at the end uh, of our presentation, there will be a slide uh, with uh, links to um, source code of most of these plugins. So uh, you're welcome to, uh, to, yeah, to download and play with it. Uh, before we can start uh, playing with uh, REST API of Transmart, uh, we have to uh, cover one important topic, which is authentication. Uh, Transmart, of course, uh, strictly controls uh, access to studies. Uh, users need to be authenticated in order to uh, retrieve studies and their contents. And it's uh, no difference that we're using RESTful API. Good news is that uh, the authentication protocol used by Transmart, OAuth2, uh, you're probably all already familiar with. For instance, while authenticating with uh, Facebook, login via Facebook or login with uh, Google on different pages such as uh, Stack Overflow uh, or GitHub. I, and on this slide, you can see a general flow of uh, how OAuth 2 works. In, uh, in a nutshell, OAuth uh, was designed in order to decouple uh, authentication process from the web service itself so that uh, one person could use um, their credentials uh, through uh, on other service than the one they are querying. In case of uh, Transmart, the situation is actually a bit more simple uh, because the server which is uh, authenticating you, which is uh, granting you a token to be used uh, in all further transactions, is also a web service. Yeah, and just before uh, going um, and uh, uh, to the list of all Transmart REST API uh, calls, it. Uh, it, it would be nice to just uh, give overview to uh, main uh, data entities of Transmart, so-called uh, yeah, vocabulary of Transmart. Uh, for uh, for uh, people who work with Transmart, and 100% uh, uh, people, right, uh, that, that, uh, it will be simpler. You could relate all this concept to uh, Transmart UI um, uh, components. Uh, so uh, these uh, main entities, uh, you will uh, see this vocabulary used also for um, on the REST API calls. So uh, those concepts like studies, study is a clinical trial experiment basically. Uh, subjects, so subject is participant of a, of a study. Concepts also could be seen as uh, variables such as age, height. And observations are actually, uh, yeah, measurements taken during study for a certain uh, subject and yeah, for a certain variable. Uh, we also have, uh, yeah, Transmart stores high dimensional data. It's a bit, uh, yeah, uh, special uh, kind of uh, type of data, uh, mainly because it has uh, more dimensions, uh, so like uh, biomarkers, molecular data, yeah. Okay, so now we can start with uh, first 
uh, RESTful endpoint, uh, which probably corresponds to the very first thing you would like to retrieve from Transfer, which is the studies. So uh, we're talking about REST API, and REST API has some conventions. In REST API, we we're talking about resources. Study is one of them. Uh, according to this convention, if we hit a, a URL for a given resource, such as studies, uh, via get method of HTTP, uh, we should expect to get a list of uh, all studies uh, that are registered in this database. If we pass a identifier after a slash for a given study, we expect to see data in the same format, but just for a single study. Below, below the table uh, on the black uh, background, so you see um, a prototype of the method that uh, comes from our client. And this is basically a wrapper uh, around the uh, RESTful call uh, that's above. So when you get uh, study ID, uh, next thing you could do is um, actually retrieve concepts. And uh, similarly enough, you have uh, two calls here. Um, so given study ID, you could get either all concepts or a uh, specific one. And below you see signature of uh, our function to fetch the data from uh, with uh, our interface. So right after having concepts and studies, uh, one more piece for the puzzle are the subjects. Subjects, similarly like concepts, uh, belong to studies. Therefore, we need to specify the study identifier by which we want to retrieve it. Sim uh, this is also a resource in REST sense, the same as studies and concepts. Therefore, if you hit uh, endpoint subjects after specifying study ID, you should also expect just a list of all subjects. And then for, you can follow on with specifying a particular subject for which data you want to retrieve. Additionally, uh, you can also filter them by concept path to retrieve only subjects uh, that uh, are, have data specified for a given concept. And like before, on the black, uh, uh, with the black, black uh, background, uh, you see a respective uh, R function that you would use in the R client in order to retrieve subjects. Yeah, so here we see uh, calls to uh, get measurements, observations for low dimensional data. And um, so you could uh, get either all observations for a given study or you could get um, observations uh, bound to certain concepts. Uh, second row in this table, you see a um, call that you do not have to specify a study ID as part of path. And that's actually a um, yeah, direction we want to move for a new API in the future. And because study is just extra dimension and uh, just to, um, to be able to retrieve cross-trial data, it's also useful. You do not have to specify study. Uh, and just pass uh, filters as uh, parameters to this call, just observations. Below you have, um, again, uh, the function uh, that you should use in uh, with our interface, with our client, to fetch observations. You could uh, specify study name and uh, also concept uh, you're interested in. All right. A special case of uh, observation is so-called uh, high-dimensional data. In theory, high-dimensional data is just another type of observation. And the only thing that, uh, that it contains more than, than normal clinical data, what we would call clinical data, is uh, two additional dimensions, the assay or sample dimension and uh, uh, the biomarker. It makes sense uh, when you have a look at uh, what kind of uh, data types are identified as uh, high dimensional. Those are, for instance, RNA seq, uh, mRNA uh, microarray uh, measurements, proteomics, uh, metabolomics, uh, and a few others. Uh, this data is uh, usually pretty uh, heavy, pretty big in volume. This is also why uh, endpoints responsible for serving high-dimensional data also contain 
uh, quite some elaborate syntax for filtering down that you can see in the second row with uh, get uh, high dimensional data for a single concept. Uh, uh, please notice the, the last part, the data constraint. Uh, I highly recommend going through uh, RESTful API documentation for which we'll uh, give you a link at the end of this presentation. This specifies uh, in detail, more detail how you can construct a, uh, an efficient query for high dimensional data, uh, for instance, to retrieve a pair biomarker or using other constraints. Uh, other uh, relevant uh, detail about uh, high dimensional data is uh, well, due to its nature, uh, it's, uh, all of them have some sort of projection. Uh, one example of that would be log normalized, row type, uh, and others. So this is, of course, also another parameter you have to keep in mind while retrieving data, so that uh, the data is normalized in the way that's uh, correct in your workflow. And like before, uh, you can see a method that uh, you would use in our client uh, to retrieve high dimensional data. Yeah, so the previous slide was the last one in uh, review of uh, Transmart REST API calls. And now we, mm, we're going to show you uh, examples we have for you. So these examples um, of code in R and Python, um, they, they in form of uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, for those of you who don't know what is that, uh, Jupyter Notebook is basically a document uh, that could contain uh, text, formatted text, uh, uh, live code, and uh, visualization. It's uh, really handy for uh, for reproducing and for uh, sharing uh, analysis. No. All right, and now we are going to overview of the examples that we have prepared for you. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, there are three um, features of uh, RESTful API that we want to present. And this is how to use RESTful API and its clients, in this case, our clients for advanced data analysis. Second of all, uh, how you can uh, use Jupyter to do nice document, nice interactive documents that uh, produce reproducible science and how you share your analysis. And last but not least, how you can implement custom workflows uh, custom tools uh, using Python that integrates uh, with our RESTful API. So, well, actually, now let's uh, switch to our Jupyter, Jupyter. Yeah. With that, we're going to show you first notebook. Uh, see, uh, here you could see uh, nicely formatted text and uh, hyperlinks and uh, graphics. And uh, yeah, you could see uh, examples uh, of uh, actual authentication code. So here is a link that allows in work. Uh, when you follow this link, uh, it redirects you to the Transmart login page, and you have to uh, provide login password, and then authorize the um, R interface to use uh, data. Then you provided with the token, you should copy and, and paste it uh, in here. After evaluating this uh, cell, you see that connection is successful. And uh, yeah, you're ready to go. You could um, basically use all uh, functions uh, shown before, like uh, get studies. Here you see that uh, we have three studies here, so each row uh, representing one study. Then, um, given study, in this case we use GC8581, Geo study, uh, we uh, could fetch uh, observations. Here is an example of uh, data frame with observations. Each row is a uh, subject, and uh, each column represents a variable. 
here is another example uh, how you could get concepts for a given study. And you see here concept as uh, this path. And then uh, there is type, like is it categorical or numerical? What type of uh, concept is that? All right. So after we have loaded data uh, from Transmart uh, into our R session, uh, we are good to go uh, to do some uh, analysis. Uh, what we will do now, uh, we'll walk through two very basic examples on how to um, manipulate uh, data, uh, first clinical data and then high dimensional data. And first we'll do some simple visualization um, uh, and uh, some outlier um, discarding. So first the clinical data. Uh, we're operating on a data set, uh, well, well known GSC uh, data set uh, that uh, contains a trial uh, with uh, obstructionary uh, pulmonary disease patients. And uh, one thing that uh, possibly many of you while using uh, Transmart would do is uh, some summary statistics to get uh, overview of what's in there. But uh, Transmart has, of course, uh, predefined uh, uh, ways to plot your data, and you cannot really uh, influence it in any way. Uh, here we have example of uh, a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice plots of distribution per age of uh, males and females. Uh, so that's, of course, just a simple example that uh, how you can produce uh, visualizations from Transmart for your reports or research. Oh, and of course, uh, the notebooks for which uh, uh, the ones that we are using now and for which you will get URL at the end of uh, the presentation also contain some exercises. So if you are curious of uh, how far you can get with our RESTful API and the clients, uh, I encourage you to give it a try. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the point, the first one. And that's the, the second part. Um, more and more interesting one about the high dimensional data. Uh, we will use uh, the high dimensional data uh, with uh, some probes that we already know are interesting for, uh, for lung diseases. And uh, we'll try to make a heat map uh, and plot some differentially expressed genes and then uh, remove outliers uh, coming in our way. Uh, so, okay, we will not uh, actually retrieve the data uh, here right now because uh, so we'll just work with a static uh, not that we still, that this will take uh, quite some time. And you can of course uh, use uh, standard methods on the data frame like uh, summary uh, as our, our client uh, parses all the JSON from, uh, from the RESTful API and puts it into needs uh, our data frame. All right, and uh, yeah, let me just uh, do some transformation to prepare it from the uh, from the heat map. Sorry, sorry for that. And uh, here we go. This is a heat map, and uh, as exercise, uh, guys could try to yeah, just to read. yeah. So if you are if you are curious about the details, I encourage you to uh, walk through the cells of this um, uh, of this uh, notebook, and uh, you can create this uh, heat map yourself. Oh yeah, and of course the outliers. So at the at the very edge, we see the nasty outlier that obscures uh, the pattern. Okay, and then we can follow the. The last one, Python, uh, yeah, notebook. Yeah, so um, this Python client uh, um, is experimental. It was written uh, for just for sake of uh, yeah for these uh, exercises for and uh, just to show that it's uh, really easy to make a wrapper in any language uh, and in Python especially. Python is really popular in uh, data science uh, circles. Um, so uh, here the same uh, you could authenticate in this case it's with login password so basically we here do not use uh, OAuth two possibilities but uh, just 
uh, login password. And then, um, yeah, below uh, you see uh, uh, yeah, Panda code, like we, uh, we use a Python library for that Panda. And uh, get observation uh, from trans uh, from Transmart. Again, we have this nice, uh, nicely formatted uh, data frame. Here you see each row is a subject, and column uh, represent a variable. Yeah. All right, and uh, the, you could ask uh, why uh, do we need to have another uh, client aside from just um, well, the fact that you can use the uh, language you like more, let's say like Python. Uh, the true strength here is that it's, well, in R you can do uh, statistical analysis and actually as you will dis uh, discover in this uh, uh, notebook, uh, even while using Python we still uh, use, well, where is that? Oh, here it is. Even while using Python, uh, uh, we revert uh, to Lima package for differential expression. So you could ask, uh, so why bother? But uh, the key strength of Python is that you can um, nicely build uh, or something more of a tool that someone else could uh, reuse. So this is why we decided to make a uh, proof of concept uh, Python client to show you that it's easy to reach um, the REST API, uh, authenticate against it, get the data, and do some arbitrary um, manipulation you would like. And further, uh, further down in this, um, in this notebook, you will find an example of uh, not just a differential expression like in R, but also calling web services, in this case, uh, Keh. It's a, a Japanese uh, database um, focused on metabolism, uh, where we uh, use their web services uh, to plot uh, differentially expressed uh, genes, well, actually, the fault changes uh, on, uh, on the map of metabolic pathway. So this is a, uh, this is a, I think it's a pretty practical mathematics uh, application for which you could come up with a custom workflow in Python like that and use Transmart as your, uh, as your source of data and then uh, bind with any other uh, web services you would like. Okay, and now we're going back to our, our slides. Yeah, as, uh, as we promised, uh, here is a screen with uh, all links. Um, don't worry, I think uh, this uh, presentation will be published and uh, yeah, these uh, links will be available to you, just uh, you could click on them. Um, so uh, here uh, I want to pay special atten attention, your attention to um, complete training uh, virtual machine that we have uh, for you. You could download it from uh, Google Drive. Its virtual machine contains uh, Transmart, Jupyter, R and Python, everything uh, pre, pre installed. Um, and just please uh, follow the instructions uh, in the training number three folder. And uh, there is a tutorial and um, yeah, slides. Uh, this machine was used uh, during uh, uh, Transmart annual meeting, the last one. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, so uh, we promised, uh, we mentioned to you, um, you think we can see that? Yeah, I think so. This is the screen properly shared now. Okay. Uh, so we promised the documentation for REST API and basically all the details uh, about how to build uh, queries and uh, for the more complex uh, calls uh, you can find here. So there's the first uh, link uh, on the slide. And uh, if uh, the screen share works uh, correctly, you should be seeing the uh, readme file of uh, the REST API right now uh, with uh, all the uh, endpoints that uh, we have discussed during presentation and used um, in the uh, Jupyter Notebook are all of them are here. Also with uh, our definitions of all the entities that you need to pass uh, into them. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Maybe we uh, have questions. That's it.
Uh, I don't see any questions just yet. Um, please, if you would like to raise your hand and just ask it, I can unmute you and uh, you can ask your question. Uh, there will be a, a more extensive presentation of this um, during the Transmart Foundation annual meeting. Um, I think Ruslan and Peter will both be there in San Diego, and uh, we encourage you to consider yeah. consider coming. That's correct. Right. Hear that? Okay. We, there'll be a workshop, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a more, uh, presentation mode now, detail. and yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in uh, San Diego, it will be hands on. Hands on. Super. Uh, yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, anyone want to ask a question or I don't see any hands raised or anything? Uh, here's another one. Uh, Aravind, you, you just typed a yes. I wasn't sure. Do you have a question? I can unmute you. Let's see. Uh, can we have a question okay, to the audience? Where we're coming? Hello? Um, uh, hello. Uh, we can hear can you. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. Uh, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, actually, we are working on uh, RNSC data. And uh, I want to ask, uh, can we upload the FASTAQ files also into this? Because they are quite uh, heavy. You mean you would like to upload uh, a FASTQ files into Transmart? Yes. Uh, this is uh, not possible. Uh, so in Transmart, it's uh, as a data warehouse as a controlled ETL process, and the RESTful API is more for read only. Uh, actually, we don't need post methods where you can um, uh, create something on the server. It's about uh, cohort selection. Uh, so, so no, I should answer it is not possible. We can uh, only upload the gene expression data in form of a matrix. Uh, sorry, could you please repeat? Uh, can we upload this gene expression data in form of a matrix? Uh, you can upload the uh, process data, yes, indeed, using the transport batch or uh, some other loader for transport, yes. Okay. Because, uh, and uh, uh, I have a second question. So here, it's, uh, you told me in one of the presentations that you can create custom workflows in Python. Yes. So we cannot do any custom workflows in R, because if you have this gene expression packages, all these things, can we uh, not use that? No, well, yeah, you, you could create, of course, uh, in R and more of that, that uh, R interface uh, is, um, I would say, it's a main uh, package supported by the how I mean, it's official one and uh, well uh, tested. So yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you could create uh, any pipeline you want uh, with R. You have uh, any anything, uh, everything you need for that. Like, uh, so these pipelines will be public, or it's only for my uh, for my project. Uh, so okay, so uh, when we uh, set uh, workflows. Uh, actually, it's um, uh, not uh, it's not a uh, not a term in Transmart itself. It's just about uh, writing tools uh, or scripts in either Python or R that uh, uh, that make use of uh, RESTful API. So uh, you could as well write it in Python or uh, or in R. And uh, we just proposed uh, Python as a good tool uh, for making uh, some more modular. Uh, workflows or modular tools, while R uh, we propose more as a tool for interactive uh, uh, analytics. Okay, so for example, uh, if I write some scripts in R uh, using this uh, Jupyter notebook, then I can yes. send this to my collaborators and they can also just get the results by following this script. Exactly. Yeah. Or do, do also they need uh, to program in R? Uh, if notebook would be sent, uh, so uh, in Jupyter you have uh, either Python uh, notebook or R notebook. But uh, you seen already that uh, there is uh, interaction possible that there would be Python notebook, but you, still you could send data to R with R py two, right, and uh, do analysis on R side. So uh, saying that that um, notebook indeed it's uh, language specific. Uh, it could be either R or Python. 
and uh, if you will send R node, we will say if a person should probably understand R. Uh, but uh, yeah, what's nice about Jupyter Notebook that it's letter literate programming, so called, that you uh, could have sections with text and explanation, so not just code, but also visualizations and uh, yeah, explanation of uh, code. So person who understand a bit of R, it, it helps a lot to have this uh, text. Okay. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to make one clarification. Um, something that uh, regarding your fast queue f uh, question, um, something that the REST API does allow you to do is, um, for example, combine data that you uh, pull from Transmart with data that you have stored somewhere else. So, for example, you have uh, somewhere else your uh, your fast queue files. You could uh, combine them with the clinical data or gene expression data you have uploaded into Transmart. Um, okay. if you combine them with the same identifiers. Okay. Because uh, we were uh, we are working for a European project, and uh, we thought if we can upload the FASTQ files and uh, some uh, R packages or workflows, then any collaborator whom we share this can also use them so that we have quality control in all the analysis that we do. So we have to start the, everyone wants, uh, wants to use from the raw files itself. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Um, maybe what's good to, good to share, I don't know uh, what the timeline of your project is, but for the 17.1 version of Transmart, we're working on integration with Arvados, which is uh, a big file storage and, uh, and uh, workflow system. Okay. So I could imagine, for example, that you would store your FASTQ files in there, and then yes. we have a way to link it on the study level um, to yeah. uh, to the studies in Transmart. Yeah. Then if you have this custom workflow in R, then uh, every collaborator that I send, they can analyze on their own, so that uh, we have it um, uh, this reproducibility everywhere. Yeah. So I don't know if if, if the first half of 2017 is in time for your project. Um, if if so, then uh, yeah. Maybe it's good to take uh, to have an eye out for uh, for the seventeen point one developments. You can contact me if you want more details. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? I don't see any other hands up or any other questions posted. So um, I guess we'll um, we'll close the session. Thank you again um, for excellent presentation, Rusland and Peter, um, and thanks to the Hive for putting this together. Again, we look forward to the workshop at the Transmart annual meeting, uh, which is taking place October 25th to 27th in uh, San Diego at the University of, San of California, San Diego, UCSD. Um, and this, this session uh, has been recorded and will be posted um, later today or uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much, and um, we will close it up.